dealer fraud with service contracts and extended warranties. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers. Today, I'm joined by the amazing Elizabeth, as usual. Well, we're going to react to dealer fraud involving service contracts and extended warranties. I think most of you who follow us here on the Homer Guy channel know that we're not really big fans of dealer warranties and service plans to begin with. Well, I just personally don't see much value in them. Uh, Liz, how about you? No, me neither. Everyone here on the Homework Guide team works hard to prepare car buyers with tips for homework and research to do before the sale, specific car buying strategies, and what you need to be aware of to get a fair and honest car deal. That's right. This case involving fraud with dealer service contracts doesn't surprise me. We are inundated with comments and emails from car buyers who bought a policy only to find out later that it was worthless when they tried to use it. It's amazing how many of these we get. Yeah. Probably a thousand plus a year. Yeah. Well, all right, let's see what kind of shenanigans this car dealer pulls with these service contracts. Roll the video. For the last year, Sever on Your Side has been busy getting refunds for customers who say a New Jersey car dealer who closed up shop left them high and dry in trade-ins and service contracts. So far, more than $40,000 has been recovered. And now there's a class action lawsuit. Here's Sever on Your Side's Nina Pineda. Boy, that seems Not like a drop in the bucket. It is. New stepped in. We helped Tarita Hall finally get more than 18 grand owed on her trade-in. Channel 7 News, <gasps> come on now. Mark Eastmead got back 14,000. Awesome. Both. So these are vehicles that were traded in and the dealer had not paid them off. Correct. To the lender. So that's why they're getting the money back. Had a beef with DC and Hyundai, accused by dozens of other customers of consumer fraud after they got surprise letters from a warranty administrator letting them know it never got the money to activate hundreds of DCN contracts paid for when the dealership was owned by Joseph Natale. I have to ask you about these warranties that people bought from you that now they're saying that are worthless. There's the scoundrel. 200 I, people calling me for this. Well, let me. Let me go get some. He walked away and never came back, but we didn't. Uh, Busted. Look, <laughs> look at the little, look at the little coward walking away when he's caught red-handed. Yeah, absolutely busted. You know, here's the here's the thing. This guy um, was not even sending the money in, so he's selling these uh, service plans or the extended warranties to these customers, and he wasn't even sending the money into the warranty company. So. I'm actually uh, tell a lot of people that the service plans and warranty companies, many of them aren't that great to begin with. Well, this guy just took the all <laughs> scamology to another level and he didn't even send the money into the service plan company. Mm -hmm. and turn our backs on his customers. I was uh, duped. From Somerset to Staten Island. They just kept giving me the runaround. Notice these are elderly people, especially. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So, yeah. They are actually the prime target of scumbag dealers. Both of these repeat the customers of DC and Hyundai. Wait a minute. He said repeat customers. When you treat your repeat customers this bad? Holy wow. Buckets. Yeah. So these customers came back to buy a car from this guy a second time and he still just rips them off. They are paying for service contracts to cover potential problems. You bought a big package. Yes, I did. What was your reaction when you found out you weren't covered for anything? I was shocked. I'm mad. They took advantage of me. Yes. Howard Kinsbrunner paid fifteen hundred for a warranty on his Tucson. So you paid for it, but then you never got it. That's correct. Customers' main gripe: they couldn't reach anyone at DCN after our February report. Surprise! Surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's funny that we both saw it in the same <laughs> word at the same time. Uh, yeah, surprise. Um, yeah, these uh, dealers just kind of completely forget about you, and then of course, yeah, you can't reach them after the fact, and you know. It's crazy. It vowed to start a toll-free helpline. The dealership's lawyer insisted. It automatically rings on someone's cell at the dealership and every customer. Oh, wait a minute, though. Here, you guys, picture this. <laughs> of all the least trusted professions uh, in the United States every single year, car salesmen, dealers in that category are like at the bottom. And then you have your politicians there. And just a notch above that is lawyers. So you have a lawyer for a car dealer. Yeah, I don't believe yeah. anything this lawyer says. ...has contacted them and been dealt with. But when you dial, this is all you hear. Thank you for calling. If you know your party's extension, you may dial it now. Then it just disconnects. Oh. Yeah, just disconnects. I've tried every which way. 
to call them. I called them a hundred times. Fed up customers like them have now joined a class action lawsuit against DCN. In every situation, it just looks like they just kept the money and didn't pay for the warranties. Corey Morano says so far, 80 victims have joined the lawsuit. <laughs> wow. My hope is that every one of these people is... And, and you know why the number is 80? Because the other hundreds or thousands of people... They didn't break down, yeah. so they didn't need to even know if their warranty was working. Yeah, but, yep. you know, stories like this can create awareness or they go and check their contract or call the warranty company that they supposedly have a warranty with uh, to find this out. So, you know, this is actually a word to the wise for any car buyer out there that owns a service plan or an extended warranty. How about calling those customer service numbers that are on your documents and find out if you actually have a plan or not? Made whole. We made Howard and Karen whole. After contacting DCN, they were refunded almost four grand. Thank you. I appreciate you, especially Nina. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> this is where the news can actually be effective on behalf of consumers is yep. getting out there, covering these stories and yeah, they really don't like the attention, do they? And so sometimes they pony up with the money, and in this case, they did. Well, DCN's attorney says it has resolved every customer complaint brought to its attention, and currently they and the new dealership that bought the business are in the middle of litigation. Both say each other is responsible. <laughs> Wait, somebody bought this Yeah, they bought the dealership. And, oh, no, yes. it just keeps going. And, and now what are the two dealers doing? They're throwing each other under the bus. Yes, because Yikes. that's what dealers do. They do it when they trade cars with each other. You know, they send people out because they don't trust the other dealer. Little tip to the consumer. Yeah, they don't they don't trust each other. They throw each other under the bus. If you go visit one dealer just looking for a car, go to another dealer and tell them you came from the guy across the town. Yeah, they'll they'll they throw them under off. the bus. So this isn't surprising at all that uh, in a litigation situation, they're just blaming each other. That's what they're used to doing. For the warranty. And remember that helpline that wasn't much help? Well, after our repeated calls and emails, they finally changed their outgoing message. At least you know who you're calling now. That's about <laughs> as helpful as it gets, though. At least you know who you're calling. Yeah, that's about as helpful as dealers are. So, you know, the, the problem that pretty much anybody in our viewing audience would say is that why aren't these guys held more accountable? Why aren't there, uh, you know, the attorney generals involved? Why aren't the police involved? Why aren't these guys sitting behind bars when they do stuff? They're like not that? even paying an extra fine. They're just paying what they said they, you know, they just refunded the customer, but they're not paying any extra fines. They just yeah. got a slap on the wrist and they're put back out and do it again. Yeah, and the guy's not doing any time. And this yeah. is something that's known as theft. Okay, and fraud, and those come with uh, penalties that are that are felony level Felonies, penalties yep. that people do jail time for all the time in other industries. Well, unfortunately, in the car business, um, this is the uh, business w which has refined the process of scumbaggery, if you will, <laughs> <laughs> to quite a, a term here for these dealers. Yeah, right. they, they've refined scumbaggery to such an extent that not only do they pull all these kind of shenanigans on people, but they're so deep into the pockets of politicians that the political process, they just don't lower the boom on them like they, they, they should. So help our viewers out, Kevin. So if you really want a service plan or a warranty, you know, you think it, it, if it's your situation, how should they do that, Kevin? Well, for one, buy one from the manufacturer of the car that you're buying. So sure. if you decide to buy a dealer warranty program, I always tell people, or service plan, I always tell people, uh, first of all, negotiate that way down because it's way overpriced to begin with. So negotiate the price of it way down and then you know, a really good idea is to make sure that it's issued by the manufacturer of the car that you're buying. Now, there's pretty much no chance that there's going to be games played with that particular warranty. Not to say that they haven't figured out a way to. I'm just saying that you have reduced your odds of having a problem. Sure. The other thing is, is that people can do a search for reputable outside sellers of these plans. Dealers often do not carry the best warranty programs available. Quite often they don't. And then they're, because they're dealing with shady outfits like this, when uh, Elizabeth mentioned early in the show that we were inundated with comments and emails from people all over the country uh, that are very dissatisfied with the warranties they bought and the response they get from dealers. Yeah, that has a lot to do with why we say don't even waste your time. But if you're going to buy one from them, get the car manufacturer's uh, a warranty and then do your own homework online and consider using a service plan or an extended warranty from a dealer, consider making that your very last option. Actually, you know what? Actually, there's a better option. Th there's a better option. What is it? 
It's called save your own money. Bingo. Put it into a savings account that you don't use for anything except what you would, you know, car repairs. And then just be diligent about putting money into it every month. Because if you finance a warranty plan, you're paying a percentage extra just to have it in your in your loan. That's exactly right. If it's a three thousand dollar warranty, you're paying sixty bucks a month on that. That's roughly twenty dollars a thousand. And so take sixty dollars a month of your yeah. own cash and put it in a rainy day fund for potential repairs. And guess what? When you get down the road, I've never had any major catastrophic repairs I've ever had to make to a car because I, first of all, I make sure that I'm buying reliable vehicles to begin with. I maintain them well uh, also, but I've never had any major catastrophic things. So you know what you end up with if you put 60 bucks a month into a rating day fund in case you have a repair coming up? In almost every case, you'll find out you have money left in the bank when it comes down to Oh, now maybe I should trade in or whatever. You look in your rating day fund and you go, wow, I got 2,000 bucks or 3,000 bucks in there and I never touched it the whole yep. time I owned the car. That's the reason why dealers are selling you warranties to begin with because line majority of people don't need them and yep. subsequently they're spending that money for absolutely no reason. If you appreciate this reaction review of the service contract and warranty fraud, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on any of your favorite social media platforms out there. There's a list of options appearing on the screen now, and they're also linked in the description box below. And if you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, you see the PayPal and Cash App links appearing on the screen here. They'll also be easy to find in that description box down below or on our website. But no problem if you can't do a tip. Liz, what's the best way for our viewers to help us out? Help us get the word out. You want your friends and family to be lucky just like you, right, in finding these videos? So put them out there on your social media. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell, too, so you don't miss a thing. We're here to represent the car buyer and that's what we do. Let us know how we did that for you today. If you appreciated this video, thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter here with the amazing Elizabeth. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.